How's it going, recruits? My name is Ender Spectre, and welcome to my Attack on Titan VR Slavka tutorial. This will go over everything from basic movements to advanced techniques. There will be timestamps in the description as well as along inside the video, so you can skip around as you need. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get right on into it. Let's go ahead and talk about basic controls. Pressing in any of the directions on the left joystick allows you to walk. Simultaneously swinging your arms allows you to run as well as putting your arms back behind you and pressing in any of the directions. You can also jump by pressing down on the left joystick. However, I recommend running and then jumping in order to get a little bit of momentum with it. You can turn by pressing in either left or right on the right joystick. And then you can grip by hitting the grip buttons. And that is the basic controls. Now let's talk about your equipment. Hovering over your right chest and hitting the grip button allows you to equip your knife. And doing the same over your left chest allows you to equip your telescope. Although, I don't find it that useful. It's really not great. And on your waist, you have your ODM gear. Hovering over the handles and hitting the grip button allows you to equip your ODM gear. Over your right shoulder, you have a torch. And over your left shoulder, you have your backpack with a working compass and your menu options. To put away your backpack, simply hover over your left shoulder. Do not hit the grip button. And that goes over all of your equipment. Now let's talk about ODM controls. Go ahead and equip your ODM gear. Once equipped, pressing the triggers will allow you to shoot out your grapples. Hitting an object with your grapples allows you to go in that direction. You also have gas. Once in the air, pressing down on the left joystick allows you to activate gas. Once activated, you can press in any of the directions to go in that direction. However, gas is a limited resource and you will have to refill. So go ahead and demonstrate. Let's go ahead and get some air. Press down on the left joystick and then press forward. You also have what is called a gas burst. To use a gas burst, double tap in the direction while in the air. This gives you a huge burst of speed at the cost of more gas. So let's go ahead and demonstrate. Go ahead and grab some air and double tap forward. This is a great tool to get away from Titans or to simply keep movement while on the ground. And that is the basics to ODM controls. Now let's talk about refill stations. First and foremost, let's go ahead and de-equip our ODM gear. To do this, simply grab at your belt. And there you go. Now refill stations are useful for many reasons. First of all, it's where you refill your gas. It's how you get new blades. It's where you eat. And it's where you get new sets of ODM gear if you lose yours. To equip new ODM gear, simply use your hand and hover over it. This will equip your ODM gear. Do note that getting new ODM gear doesn't mean you get new gas and new blades. It will be the exact same as when you lost or de-equipped yours. To refill gas, simply approach the gas refill station and it will automatically attach to you and refill your gas. To get new blades, simply grab at the new blade, hold down the grip button, and then drag it into your ODM gear. If you were out of blades when you began, you can grab your handles by grabbing slightly above belt height and hitting the grip buttons. This will grab your handles and you can reattach new blades. Next, you have your food. In order for you to regen health, you have to have food. To eat, just simply grab either a uh, piece of bread or a potato and hold up to your mouth. It takes a lot to refill the food meter though. And that covers everything for the refill stations. To attach and reattach new blades, simply hit the menu buttons while your ODM gear is out to detach them, and then to reattach them, hold them over the new blades and hit the menu buttons again to get new blades. Another small thing you can do with your ODM gear is you can actually grab your blades backwards just like Levi does in the anime. Now let's go ahead and talk about monitoring your resources. Currently the gas bar is the only resource bar you can monitor with the HUD off. The HP and the food bar will be getting their own sound effects for when they're low and the upcoming updates. But there are currently three ways to know what your gas is at without having the HUD on. First and foremost, you can listen to the sound your grapples make when you shoot them out. You can listen to the sound that your gas makes while using it. Or you can listen to the sound that your canisters make when you bang on them. You can bang on your canisters by having a fist and simply knocking on your canisters. Let's go ahead and compare the sounds that they make when at full resource and when at no resources.
Now while I showed the sound that the gas makes while full and while almost empty, it is important to note that the gas changes sound progressively as your gas goes down. The important takeaway from this is that when you bang on your canisters, the higher pitch it is, the lower gas you have, and the lower pitch that your grapples and gas makes may also note how low your gas is. Now let's talk about sliding. Sliding is a mechanic where if you approach the ground at an angle, you can turn downward momentum into forward momentum. This is great for when you're attacking Titan's legs or keeping your movement fluid. Let me show you what I mean. If we go ahead and get some air and we get some forward momentum, we can keep that movement going by then grappling afterwards. And that's sliding for you. Now let's talk about rolling and flipping. So when you're in the air, tilting your head will allow you to roll and then holding either backwards or forwards on the right joystick will allow you to flip. This is great because it gives you much more mobility options. For example, if there's a Titan underneath you, sometimes it'll be easier to hit that target if you flip upside down and then attack him. Sometimes I find it easier that if I'm about to go uh, swing by a Titan, that sometimes it's easier to roll to your side and then attack the nape and then just flip back or continue the roll. Not only does this look badass, but it's also just very beneficial for you to hit targets that you wouldn't be able to normally reach. Now let's talk about Titan shifting. First and foremost, you have to be a Titan shifting character in order to Titan shift, and each shifter will have their respective Titan. So there are two ways to actually shift into a Titan. You can either bite your hand by holding your hand up to your mouth and hitting the grip button, or you can use the knife that is on your person and cut yourself. Let's go ahead and do it now. Once your Titan shift, you can swing your arms and hold in the direction to move, and you will slowly pick up speed. However, once hitting max speed, you can crash into buildings to break them. You'll also have to slide in order to stop. In order to exit a Titan, simply look down for a couple seconds. Once you're out of the Titan, you can then fall out. However, it's a little bit tricky. You might have to roll yourself a little bit. Come on, there we go. And then you can exit your Titan. You will lose your ODM gear upon exiting a Titan, so keep that in mind. And that is Titan shifting. Now let's talk about horses. When you first load into a world, a horse will not be claimed to you. In order to claim a horse, simply walking up to it and interacting with it in any way will claim the horse. You will know the horse is claimed when it looks at you. You can pull the horse anywhere you want by grabbing its reins and just pulling it. You can also mount the horse by grabbing onto its saddle and pulling yourself up. Upon getting onto the horse, you can swing your arms while holding the grip buttons to move. You can hold, pull the reins left and right to turn, and you can pull back to stop. To dismount the horse, you can grab onto the saddle again and pull yourself down, or you can use your ODM gear to dismount. If you lose your horse, you can hold your hand up to your mouth and click the trigger to whistle and the horse will come back to you. And that's horses. Alright, now let's go ahead and talk about cannons. You have two different types of cannons. You have the stationary cannon and you got the mobile cannon. Starting off with the stationary cannon, you have two cranks. The lower one cranking it uh, clockwise will make it go right. And turning it counterclockwise will make it go left. The upper one turning it clockwise will make it go up and counterclockwise to go down. When you're ready to fire, grab the string on top and pull. Now for the mobile cannons, you can actually fully move these ones around. To tilt the cannon up and down, you can grab it from the back and tilt it up and down. And then to move it from side to side, as well as up and down, you can grab it from the back and you can move it around this way. Once you have it in the place you want it, you can actually let go of this and it will lock in place. And then to fire it, you grab the string that's right here and then you pull on it. And that is how you use cannons. Let's talk about forms of damage. First and foremost, there is fall damage. You can also take damage by getting grabbed by a titan. The longer you are grabbed, the more damage you will take. Also, if you are eaten by a titan, it's instant death. You can also take damage uh, by cutting yourself with a knife while you're not a titan shifter. Now let's talk about titans. There are two points of a titan you can attack. You can attack their legs to immobilize them, and you can attack their nape to kill them. Let's go ahead and attack this titan's legs. 
when you attack a titan's legs, they will be immobilized for a round of for a couple of seconds. This one got up really quickly. To kill a titan, simply attack their nape. Doing so can break your blades, in which case you'll need to replace them. And that is attacking titans. Now titans are very deadly. Upon seeing you, they will try to grab you and eat you. Upon being grabbed, you will take damage very quickly and over time. And if they successfully eat you, it's instant death. Alright, now let's talk about settings. First and foremost, there are some settings that I recommend you change right off the bat, but there are also some settings that I recommend you don't change at all, or at least you don't change until you're a bit more comfortable with the game. I will also be breaking this into individual sections, so feel free to skip around. Alright, let's go ahead and talk about gameplay settings. To access your settings, go ahead and grab your bag and click on options. The first setting you'll be greeted with is your turn mode. I recommend you keep this on smooth because it makes flipping and flip kills a lot easier. For turn speed though, feel free to change that however you see fits you best. Um, do keep in mind that it does affect your flip speed as well. For your hook shoot threshold, I keep mine at base value. When I have changed it in the past, I honestly noticed no difference. For slow motion, if you want to use slow motion, you have to make that value below 1. To activate it, click down on the right d-pad. If you don't want to use it, however, I recommend you keep it at 1 as to prevent you from accidentally activating it. For gas usage, I also recommend you keep this at base value, which is 1, because later down the line, it will not be an option to you. For VR size, if you want to change it, it can change your character size. However, I also keep mine at base value because it just feels the most realistic. Now for the aim settings. Alright, so for the aiming and aiming reticles, I'm going to go ahead and try to keep these brief. So the, let's talk about the first two that I want to talk about first are aim offset and the aim reticle size. Your offset changes where your reticle is at in uh, comparison to your blade. It also changes where your grapples go. So right now mine is slightly above where my blade is at. However, if I were to turn this down, it'll actually make the reticle lower and adjust where my grapples shoot as well. If my reticle is too big, I can actually turn it down so now it's smaller. Or I can make it bigger so that way it's much easier to see. Um, later down the line, if you wish to do so, you can actually turn your reticle off entirely. Uh, this is nice for when you're making gameplay videos and you just don't want to uh, have that there. And that covers all of the aiming and aiming reticles. Alright, so with that out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about the HUD now. So, I'm only going to keep this very brief since I talked about it earlier, but essentially what the HUD allows you to do uh, is uh, it allows you to see your in-game stats. However, I keep mine turned off because there are other ways of checking it, uh, checking your stats, as I said before, and I find that it just gets in the way, so I just keep it off. Reset height is a very helpful option to have. When you jump in real life, it actually phases your player model into the ground uh, to counteract it. Um, so by clicking this, it just resets the floor height. Flipping uh, is the first setting that I recommend that you turn on right away. The other ones are pretty much optional, but I recommend you turn on flipping right away. The reason is, is because without it, you can't flip and you can't roll. And it's something that I think that all players should start getting used to right away. Uh, you can also inver uh, invert your flipping if you want to. Um, and then for room scale, I recommend you keep this turned on, which is just your base settings. Uh, mostly because I really don't know what it does. Uh, I've played with it a little bit turned off. I haven't noticed any difference, so I just keep mine turned on. For your roll dead zone and your flip dead zone, um, you can adjust these to however you see fit. Basically, uh, if you find that you're rolling when you don't want to, you can turn that up. Uh, and then if you want to, uh, if you find that you're flipping when you don't want to, or that you have stick drifts, you can also turn that up to accommodate for that. Um, now I'm gonna go ahead and go over sword grab toggle and WMR mode. Uh, separately because there are some things to them that are just a little bit weird. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Alright, let's go ahead and go over sword grab toggle. So to, first and foremost, this toggle is grip for everything from just normal gripping, to grabbing your sword, to getting on a horse, to climbing a building. It grips everything. Now, when you turn this off, you have to hold your grip uh, in order to grab your sword or to get on a horse or whatnot. Um, if you're using uh, Oculus controllers, Great, you can you can turn this on or off. However, if you're not, you'll have to do what I like to call a grip check. When you turn this off, if you when you hit the grip button, your hand doesn't uh, grip. You're gonna have to turn this on. The reason this is is because if I were to get on a horse right now, and I hold the grip buttons and then swing my arms, the horse isn't going anywhere. So you have to turn this on. So if I turn it on now, now the horse moves. So make sure you do a grip check. See if your controllers work with it turned off. 
or just have it turned on. I prefer it turned on anyways. All right, so WMR mode stands for Windows Mixed Reality Mode. It essentially makes it so that people who are playing on the Windows Mixed Reality headset and are using those controls are able to attach and detach the blades since they don't have the extra buttons to do so. So normally to attach and detach blades, as I stated before, you just click the menu buttons to uh, detach and then uh, to reattach, you simply hit the menu buttons again while hovering over new blades. However, since Windows Mixed Reality controllers don't have that, we have this mode. Essentially what it allows you to do is uh, on the back of your handles you have these little hammers and by touching those you can detach your blades like that and reattach new ones by simply hovering over them. Now there is an upside and a downside to this. The upside is uh, you can quickly uh, detach and get new blades very quickly uh, and honestly in any situation. Uh, the downside is that you can't sword throw which is an advanced technique that I will talk about later on in this video. Um, so I actually recommend to keep this off and get used to not using it. However, obviously if you're using Windows Mixed Reality, you don't really have that as an option. Alright, now let's go ahead and go over the graphics and physics settings. Starting off with the graphics, you have a whole bunch of different rendering, lighting, and gra uh, texture quality settings. You can go ahead and adjust these to however powerful your PC is, but it's going to take some experimentation to find out what doesn't lag. Uh, a few notable settings though are the time of day setting, the day speed setting, and the shading options. Starting off with the time of day, it simply just changes the time of day that it currently is. Right now, I have mine set to dusk because it, I find that the backlighting makes it easier to see the settings. You also have the day speed slider, which changes how fast your day moves out uh, normally. I have mine set to zero right now. It's normally like a point, uh, 0.4 or something like that, but I have it set to zero just so it stays at this time of day. Then you have your shading options. Normally it is set to off, which gives you a realistic uh, shading style. However, you also have the anime option, which makes it look like how it is in the anime. And then you also have the manga option, which just makes it black and white. It's more of a meme, but it's, you know, it's there. So now for the most confusing settings in this game. Um, I'm just going to try to make this as very simple as possible. Until you get more comfortable with the game, I recommend starting off with Square Root. Square Root is what most people use. It is what I use. Um, however, the other ones, if you want to play with them later on, you absolutely can. Um, uh, some other settings that I don't change at all are the real outlock and the experimental hand collisions. I don't mess with these uh, just because I find that it just most of them just get in the way, like the experimental hand collisions. Just allow your hands to have collisions with other objects. Yeah, I just like to keep it off. And the real out just makes it so when you go around edges, uh, it like locks your reels so it's easier to make turns. I as, as I said, I just keep it on default, which is on. Now let's go ahead and get on to the Z-axis boost and the pull intensity and the hook shot speed. Alright, so Z-axis boost is probably one of the most difficult uh, settings to fine-tune to your playstyle. Essentially what it does is it makes it so when you grapple above player height, uh, it'll, uh, you'll get a boost of upper momentum depending on what this uh, setting is set to. So to kind of show you what I mean, um, if I were right now if I were to grapple above my player height, I get a good set of uh, speed going upwards. This is very nice because a lot of your targets are above you. Now if I were to set this to zero, just like that, and then I were to grapple uh, above my player height, essentially what's going to happen is I'm going to slide across the ground until I reach the point in which I'm in line with my grapples. Now you can uh, recreate the same thing as having Z-axis boost if you use your gas, or just by simply uh, shooting your grapples earlier. Um, however, I personally find that having the, this setting uh, set to somewhere around uh, default settings, or for me personally, I have mine set to uh, 0.75. Um, I honestly find this better because you end up wasting a lot less gas in the end. Uh, and you can still recreate the effect of having uh, zero Z-axis boost by simply uh, shooting out your grapples and then just lightly pulling in. And then this also allows you to, um, uh, like, like once you get to that point where you want to go up, you just hold down your grapples a bit more. Um, so I find this a lot nicer. Uh, it's a little more difficult to kind of recreate the effect of having zero Z-axis boost, but it's still, you know, you're going to be ending up using Z-axis boost a lot more. So that's what I recommend. However, feel free to go ahead and experiment uh, to whatever your liking is. All right, so moving on into the pull intensity multiplier and the hook shoot speed. This is going to be more of why I recommend you keep this at default settings. But starting off with pull intensity multiplier, uh, the reason I keep this at default settings is because I feel that I can pick up enough speed using my grapples enough as it is. Um, and it, there's not really much set, uh, to play with here. So I just recommend keeping it at default. I find that it's plenty speed uh, what I need. 
Now for the hook shoe speed, the reason that I keep this at default settings is because there are some nice uh, quality of life things you can do when it's set to default. For example, it allows you to preemptively shoot at where you want to grapple if that makes sense. To demonstrate, if I were to uh, grapple up and I grapple behind this building, I'm still going to end up hitting it because my grapple ends up running into it anyways. So that is why I keep that at default. However, feel free to fine tune this to your playstyle. Alright, so moving on to the rest of the settings. Starting off with multiplayer, you have like the different characters you can choose from. Uh, each character has their own voice lines, which we'll get onto in the extras tab. But they also have their own respective titans. So Aaron has the attack titan, Baratolt has the colossal, and so on and so forth. Moving on to the spawn tab. Uh, this is where you can spawn in titans. If you don't have this tab, make sure you finish the tutorial and time trial first. Starting off, you have the max titan spawn, which changes how many titans are actually spawned in. Uh, for the titan FOV, I keep this at default. I honestly don't notice what it does. Uh, for the titan spawn area size, uh, if you have, uh, or if you turn this up, it changes the area in which a titan can spawn in. Uh, you have the respawn timer and the respawn. Uh, if you want to have them respawn, you can turn that on. And then the respawn timer is a set timer that will spawn one titan up to the max that you have set uh, every time that timer is finished. You can also assign uh, spawning titans to a button, and you can remove uh, all of the spawn areas. Moving on to audio, this is very simple. You have your music and your ambient volume, as well as your intro music, if you want to have that. Camera is probably one of the uh, con most confusing, but it's also one of the uh, probably one of the cooler ones that you can play with. Uh, essentially, what this does is it allows you to spawn in a camera. So right now, I have one in front of me that displays on your monitor. This is great for if you're recording. Uh, like montages and stuff. Um, I used I used it a little bit when I was making the uh, trailer uh, video. So um, you have a whole bunch of different options, such as I'm gonna turn this off real quick. You got things like the velocity cam, which changes like the FOV depending on how fast you're moving. You got a free cam, which you can grab and move around as you uh, however you like, uh, and you can attach it to different points of your body. There's a lot to play with here, um, so play with it if you would like to. Moving on to the extras tab. Very simple stuff, right, uh, you have Titan Flipping, which allows you to flip as a Titan. I keep this turned off because honestly, it's just kind of annoying, um, and I don't even really use Titans that much. Uh, then you got Character Talks, which uh, each of the characters have their own respective voice lines, so when you kill a Titan, sometimes they'll say something. Uh, if you knock on your gas, sometimes they'll make a little comment about it. Um, so you have all those different options as well. Uh, the Controls tab doesn't actually allow you to change your controls, it just kind of shows you an uh, image of the uh, Oculus controls. Um, that's about it. So, that's all of the settings for you. This officially marks the end of the basic tutorial and the start of the advanced techniques and tricks. For this, I recommend you have a good amount of time in the game and you're comfortable with everything that I talked about before. So let's go ahead and get straight on into it. To start off the advanced section of this tutorial, I want to talk about conserving gas. Conserving gas is super important as running out of gas in the middle of the air or in the middle of a fight basically guarantees your death. Now, conserving gas comes down to using the least resource intensive option at any given time. Now, obviously, you're not going to be able to get away with only using grapples. You're going to need to use gas in order to get out of the way of objects or to line up an attack. But there are options to you at any given area. So the three areas that I like to break this down into are your low density areas, which would be like your flat areas and your hills. Then you got your medium dense areas, which would be considered like your towns. And then you got your high density areas, which would be considered like the forest and the redwoods forest. So let's go ahead and go to these different locations and show you different ways that you can conserve your gas in these different areas. So for these sections, I'm going to explain how I conserve gas in an area, and then I'm going to give a demo of that. Starting off, we have the medium dense areas. This is what I consider to be the easiest area to move around in because you have many options for you available. So to explain a few little techniques that you'll be using, uh, the first one I want to talk about is making wide turns around the buildings. If you use a single grapple while you have a good amount of speed, you can make wide turns. And then if you use two grapples, you can make even tighter turns. To pick up most of your speed, you're going to be using the long straightaways to be able to grapple far in front of you because the further you grapple away, the faster that you'll get pulled in. So you'll be able to use that to your advantage in order to pick up a lot of speed without using your gas. The moments that you'll be using your gas the most are when you're in the tight corridors, when you're, there's a titan in there and you got to kind of line up an attack, as well as just general lining up attacks while you're out in the open as well. So let's go ahead and demo this now.
All right, so moving on to the next area, I want to talk about forests or your high density areas. For this, I've actually turned off shadows so it's actually easier to see since uh, the sh shadows make it really dark. So for the most part, you will still be using a lot of your grapples, but you will also be using considerably more gas than you did in the town. The reason this is is because you're going to have quickly approaching trees that you need to get out of the way of that your grapples won't allow you to. So for the most part, when you're moving in a single direction, you'll be using your grapples for the general direction and then uh, dodging and weaving between trees using your gas. Let's go ahead and demo this now. Alright, so lastly we have our low density areas, which would be considered your plains areas and your mountains. Now for the most part, it's very easy to conserve gas in these areas. You just gotta ride your horse. Now obviously that's not gonna always be an option to you. If there's a titan, you may not be able to hit their nape from a horse's back. Some of the smaller ones you actually can, but for the most part, if there's a big one, you're not gonna be able to. So what's the best way to conserve gas in these situations? You can actually use the horses uh, like on a horseback to cut a titan's legs to immobilize them, which will give you an easy opportunity to go up and attack the nape. You can also uh, just generally use the titan and uh, swing around them, around their back to actually get their nape as well. This is going to use considerably more gas in any of the areas just because you have nothing to grapple onto. So keep that in mind when you're doing this. I'm not going to demo this just because horses right now are very buggy and jittery, so I will be coming back to this in a future update. Now let's go ahead and talk about your cat-like reflexes. Now when I say cat-like reflexes, I'm being pretty literal about it. Basically when you're in the air, you should be able to always find your way back to being able to land on your feet. To show you what I mean, if I were to go up in the air and just hold random directions, I'm always able to figure out how to get back on my feet before I land. This is a very important skill to have because a lot of newer players when trying to perform tricks often get lost and will end up landing on their side or on their head or whatnot. So make sure you are really comfortable about landing back on your feet. Now let's go ahead and talk about sword throwing. Now as stated before, you have to have WMR mode turned off in order to perform this trick and you'll understand why very quickly. To perform the trick, simply swing your arm and hit the blade release button at the same time. Now to perform a stronger blade throw, uh, try flicking your wrist a bit more. Now, so, uh, sword throwing is useful because if you manage to throw your blades into a titan's eyes, it will uh, cause them to get stunned. Now if you stun a titan while you are grabbed, it will cause them to release you. You can also use this in the middle of the air, however the stun only lasts for about a quarter of a second and is only really useful in order to swing by a titan without getting grabbed. I don't recommend this just because it is so hard to aim uh, sword throws while in the air. But let's go ahead and show you an example of both of these now. Now let's go ahead and demonstrate uh, using a sword throw in order to escape a grasp. If I already get grabbed, I want to wait till I have a clear opening for their eyes and then throw the blade. As you can see, the titan released me and I can now get away safely. <laughs> Alright, let's go ahead and try to this trick again, but on a bigger titan and when grabbed out of the air. Now when you're grabbed out of the air, a titan will just try to eat you right away, and if that happens, there's not really much you can do, you don't really have an opportunity to sword throw. However, if that doesn't happen, then the best time to uh, throw your blades is when they're trying to like, like kind of moving you downward. You'll see uh, what I mean when I perform the trick now. Go ahead and get some speed real quick. Grabbed. And on that little downward animation, that is the best time uh, to sword throw in order to get uh, uh, free. Now let's go ahead and talk about a few tricks. Now, I say tricks, but to be honest, they're not tricks for just looking cool. These tricks usually have a lot of different benefits of doing. The first one I want to talk about is the roll kill. Now, the roll kill is very handy because it allows you to get angles that you wouldn't normally be able to hit. It's very simply, all it is, is being able to go in the air, roll to your side, being able to attack, and then being able to continue on with your movement or to be able to land. Let's go ahead and show what it looks like on an actual Titan. 
Let's go ahead and perform the trick on this Titan right here. Something that's a little bit more advanced that you can do with this is being able to boost yourself up after the roll kill. Essentially what you'll do is you'll perform the roll cut and then you'll face down and boost backwards. Let me show you what I mean. This can help you prevent fall damage, especially when you're going in on lower targets. The next trick I want to show you is how to use your grapples to quickly get their feet and their nape. What you want to do is you want to grapple near their body or uh, near their nape, and then use your other grapple to grapple near their legs. Pull more in with the grapple near their legs, and then once you get low and you can cut their legs, let go of that grapple, and it should pull you up so you can easily cut the nape, or give you enough air so you can re-grapple and then get the nape that way. Let's go ahead and do it now. If you want something a little more advanced, what you can do is you can fly above their head and then grapple their nape. By do if you do this correctly, what it will do is it will swing you down, you can cut their legs, go in between their legs, and swing back up so you can get a nape. Let's go ahead and show you what how this looks. The next trick I want to go over is the overhead flip. This is a very versatile trick and it's very easy to perform. All you have to do is go up in the air, roll upside down, and then flip backwards to finish it off. This allows you to get behind targets where their nape will be more visible. What makes this trick so versatile is how you incorporate gas into it. You can perform it almost anywhere because of this. So to show you what I mean, if we go ahead and grab myself some air, and I roll upside down, and I flip just a little bit, I can incorporate gas to get myself some more air, so if it's a larger target, I can easily get over him. Or, if the target is far away, I can flip it back a little more, and then incorporate gas to easily get that distance I need to be able to get over him. You can also use this to be able to flip upside down, and then be able to swing down if the target is low, and then get the nape. Let's go ahead and show you what that looks like. To perform this trick on a low target, go up, flip upside down, get a little bit more air, and then swing down into their nape. Another trick you can perform that's honestly not even really a trick, is if you have your Z axis boost turned on, you can do what I like to call a building hop. If you go in between two buildings while you're low and grapple, you can easily get above the buildings so you can kill titans that spawn on top of buildings. Very useful, and I use it all the time. This officially marks the end of my tutorial tips and tricks video. Thank you all so much for watching, and if you learned something, make sure you leave a like and go ahead and subscribe as well. If you have any questions or want me to explain something more, go ahead and leave a comment down below. I do intend to keep on updating this uh, tutorial as the game progresses. With that said, I will see all you new recruits later.